Hi, this video is all about heating and cooling curves. First, what's a heating curve? A heating curve is a graph and it plots uh, temperature against heat. And so imagine, let's say, an ice cube. If you were to throw that into a beaker, uh, put that beaker on top of a hot plate and heat that up, as the ice cube melts from solid into liquid, and then as that liquid water eventually boils, the whole time you're tracking the temperature. And a heating curve is what you would plot if you were to plot that temperature as heat is added at a constant rate. So here's an example heating curve. Uh, the left side, the y-axis, is the temperature. Uh, and the x-axis, the bottom part here, is the heat. Um, or sometimes this is time, but it's really more the y-axis values that we care, uh, care about. And so here's what an example uh, heating curve would look like. This is kind of an oversimplified version of a heating curve. They're not normally you know, approaching at hard angles like this. They're going to be a little more smooth if you look at an actual heating curve in real life. But what's happening? Well, this substance, is this first slanted area here, is in the solid phase. And then it reaches a point, the temperature's climbing here from 0 to 37.5 degrees Celsius. Then it reaches a point right here where the temperature actually stops climbing, even though heat is still being added at a consistent rate. Well, what's happening then? At this point here in this flat line, this substance is melting. And in chemistry, we would refer to that as fusion. Um, and so in this kind of area of the graph, the heat that's being added to this sample is not being used to change the temperature of the substance, it's being used to change the phase. And what that means is at this point here, uh, particles are spreading out. Are spreading out. You know, this uh, makes it look like my handwriting is terrible. I promise it's better than this in real life. But particles are spreading out at this phase. And so that's an increase in what we would call potential energy. Potential energy in this case is related to the distance between the particles. Um, let me back up for a second. At this solid phase here, as, as the temperature is going from 0 to 37.5, what we're seeing here is an increase in kinetic energy. Uh, after all, temperature is the measure of kinetic energy. It's how fast the particles are moving. Okay, great. So we've gone from 0 to 37.5, and, and that whole time this substance was a solid. At 37.5, it spends some time doing the work of changing phase. And so again, what that means is that particles are spreading out. They're going from a more ordered solid into a more flowy liquid. And so it's this entire middle slant here where this substance is completely in the liquid phase. And now the potential energy is staying the same, but the kinetic energy is increasing again. So here we see an increase in kinetic energy all along this slant. We get to a point at 112.5 degrees Celsius where the temperature stops climbing. And again, just like we saw with fusion, we're now boiling. And this in chemistry is called vaporization. Now notice this line, this plateau here, is much longer than the fusion line. And the reason for that is because it takes more heat to boil something than it does to melt it. Why? Well, as a solid, the particles are still in contact. As a liquid, the particles are still in contact. Solids are more ordered. Particles are vibrating in place. And the liquids, they're a little less ordered, and the particles are flowing around each other. So it takes some heat to melt, but it takes more heat to boil, and that's because in the gas phase, which is way up here, you've got particles that are completely separated from each other, which is different from a solid and a liquid. In these cases, both of these substances have particles that are still in contact with each other. Gases have particles that are completely separated, and for that reason, it's going to take much more uh, heat energy to vaporize something than it will to melt it. Um, and so it's at this phase here that we are completely as, as a gas, and again, kinetic energy is back to increasing um, in this vaporization area. That's where, again, where we see potential energy increasing and kinetic energy is staying the same. Uh, how do I know that the, the temperature is not changing? This whole time it's 112.5, just like this whole time down here it's 37.5. So we don't see a difference in kinetic energy there. We see uh, only a change in potential energy. Now, how is this different for a cooling curve? Well, it's really not too much different. It's essentially just flipped around. A cooling curve is where you're starting with a gas or a liquid, in this case a gas, and you're just 
consistently removing heat from it at a constant pace um, and watching it kind of go from the gas to the liquid to the solid phase. The only major difference is that this isn't vaporization here, this would be condensation, and this of course isn't fusion, it's freezing. Um, other than that, it's really just flipped around version of a heating curve. So that's it, those are heating curves and cooling curves. Uh, helpful to visualize how the temperature is changing as we change phases uh, of a substance while heated or cooled. Thank you.